In this video, we will have a look at fake settings. Let's create a test solution. First, we go to File, New, Project, and choose Visual C Sharp. Then we select Class Library and give the project a name. In this case, Fake Settings Demo. We can browse to the folder where we want to store the solution and click OK. Right click on the fake settings demo in the solution explorer and select add new folder and name it interfaces. We do the same again, right click on fake settings demo and select add new folder and name it classes. Under the classes folder, we will have two subfolders, one for stubs and one for shims. Right click on the classes folder and select add new folder and name it stub classes. Add one last folder and name it shim classes. Next, we want to add interfaces and classes. We will be working with vehicles, so let's add an interface named iVehicle under the interfaces folder. Right click on the interfaces folder and select add new item. Select interface in the list, type in the name iVehicle and click the add button. Now we have an interface. Let's add the functions drive, stop and turn to the interface. To be able to test the interface, it must be public. Next, we want to add some stub classes that implement the iVehicle interface. To do this, we right click on the stub classes folder and select add class and name it car. This class will implement the iVehicle interface because when using stubs, we need interfaces to get access to the classes. By using interfaces, we can choose what part of the class we want to implement. You can see that iVehicle isn't accessible which means that we need to add a using statement to resolve this. Right click on iVehicle and select resolve fake settings demo.interfaces. In this testing scenario, we right click on the interface name again and select implement interface explicitly. The implemented functions contain the not implemented exception and we do not want this exception thrown when testing. So let's replace it with an empty function block and make the class public. This is the basic setup that we will be using for the stub classes. Let's copy the class and create two more classes. Right click on the stub classes folder and select add class and name it bicycle. Paste in the code we copied and rename the class bicycle. And again, you can see that the using statement for the iVehicle interface needs to be resolved. Add a third class to the stub classes folder named boat and paste in the code and change the class name to boat. Next, we want to create the shim classes. Shim classes don't need to have interfaces implemented since the interception is made during runtime, not the design time. Right click on the shim classes folder, select add class, name it car rec and implement a function called stop so that we don't have an empty class. Repeat this two more times to add the bicycle rec and boat rec classes. To be able to test the functionality, we need to add a test project. Right click on the fake settings demo solution name and select add new project. Select test in the tree view and then unit test project. Name it fake settings demo test and click OK. We now have two projects, one called fake settings demo and one called fake settings demo test. The latter will be used to test the functionality of the fake settings demo project. 
In the test project, we will add the same folder structure as in the system under test to make it easier to find the classes. A default test class is generated with some demo code inside. Let's copy and use this sample code for our test classes. Add a class named shim tests under the shim classes folder and substitute the class for the one we copied. We also have to resolve the unit testing namespace to enable unit testing in the class. Do the same for the stub classes folder. The last thing we want to do is to remove the default test class that was generated for us. Simply right click on it and choose delete. Next we will have a look at creating the fakes assembly and how to filter its contents. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that we have a reference set to the project or assembly being tested. After expanding the references folder, we can see that we don't have a reference set to the fake settings demo project. To add it, we right click on the references folder and select add reference. Go to the projects tab, select fake settings demo and click OK. Now that the reference has been added, we can use it to create a fakes assembly that we can use when testing with stubs and shims. Right click on the reference and select add fakes assembly. When it's done, an assembly with the name fake settings demo.fakes has been added to the project. If we want to have a look at the .cs file that was created for this assembly, we click on the show all files button we scroll down to the bottom of the Solution Explorer and expand the obj, debug, fakes, fsd folder. The fsd folder will be named differently for other projects. It is loosely modeled after the project under test. In the file list you can find the .cs file and open it. Let's build the solution and have a look at the result. You can see that the build has succeeded and that the test methods have been added to the test explorer but have not been run yet. Now let's have a look at what's inside the fakes assembly. Open the stub tests class and start writing fakes settings demo and the namespace will be displayed. Inside that namespace we find the classes and the stub classes namespaces. You can see that we have classes named bicycle, boat and car. In the fakes namespace we find the shims and stubs for those classes. If we want to limit what's generated in a fakes assembly, we can filter it before building. Filtering the fakes assembly will improve performance because we can add only the necessary types. In order to achieve this we need to use the XML file provided for this purpose. It's located in the fakes folder. The file is named the same as the system under test with .fakes appended. When generated, the XML file is basically empty. It only contains the assembly tag. If we want to disable the creation of stubs altogether, we can use the stub generation tag with the disable attribute set to true. The same goes for shims, but we use the shim generation tag instead. If we build the solution now, no shims or stubs will be created. Let's have a look in the test function to make sure that no classes were generated. Next, we will look at how to clear the list of shimmed or stubbed classes so that we have a clean slate. We do this by using the same tag, stub generation, but we create a closing tag for it. Inside the stub generation tag, we then place the clear tag. We can of course do the same for shims using the shim generation tag. After the clear tag we can place add and remove tags determining what will be created in the fakes assembly. Within add and remove tags we can use wildcards. Asterisk, a star, specifies the range of types to be included or excluded in the fakes assembly. Exclamation mark, specifies that precise case sensitive matching will be performed. Semicolon will be used to state more than one filter that will be used to select types. 
With that said, let's add some classes. We use the add tag with the type name attribute. In this case, we want to add the car, bicycle and boat classes. Having multiple add statements, one for each class, is cumbersome and hard to read. Why not use wildcards instead? We know that we want to add the car class and any class having the name beginning with the letter B. If we change the first add statement to car semicolon B followed by an asterisk, we can remove the other two add statements. If we build this and go back to our test method and look at what's in our fakes assembly, we can see that only the stub classes remain. Remember that we cleared the shims. Next, we want to remove one of the stub classes. And to do that, we use the remove tag with the type name attribute. Let's remove the boat class. We can do this by adding boat to the type name attribute. If we build this and go to our test function, we can see that the fakes assembly now only contain the bicycle and car classes. We can fake system assemblies, but this should be avoided because it can lead to unpredictable behavior. The way we fake system assemblies is basically the same as before, using the clear add and remove tags. If we want to add the system and system IO namespaces, we would use the add tag using the namespace attribute. When faking system namespaces, we want to make sure that the namespace name has the right casing. To achieve this, we use the exclamation mark wildcard that matches upper and lowercase letters. Remember to create a fakes assembly for the system assembly if you want to try this. When creating fakes, you might want to log information about the build process to see that it went well. You add the settings to the XML file stored in the fakes folder, activating the diagnostics logging by adding two attributes to the fakes tag. The first is diagnostic that you set to true, and the second is verbosity, which sets the level of diagnostic information being logged. We set this to the highest level, noisy, to get the most information. After the attributes have been added, we need to check that the correct settings are being used for the diagnostic output. We do that in the Tools Options dialog box. Expand the projects and solutions and select Build and Run. Make sure that Diagnostic is selected in the MS Build Project Build Output Verbosity drop down. To see the actual output being generated, we need to open the output window. This can be done by selecting Output in the View menu. After building the solution, we can see that a lot of information is being displayed about the fakes in the output window. By default, when faking a strong named assembly, you don't have to do anything. Everything is handled automatically and the same strong name key will be used for the fakes assembly. If you on the other hand want to use a different strong name, you can add the key file attribute to a compilation tag in the fakes configuration file pointing to the desired .slk file. The compilation tag has to be added at the end of the fakes tag to avoid compilation errors. We need to do three things if we want to remove a fakes assembly. First, we need to remove the fakes folder in the test project, right click on it and select delete. Second, we need to remove the reference to the fakes assembly, right click on the reference and select remove. And lastly, we need to remove the fakes assembly folder. To do this, we first need to show all files. Then we right click on the folder and select delete. Writing all the test code directly in each test method might lead to a lot of duplicated code. To avoid this, you can place common code in an initialization method. Be aware, however, that certain code being placed in an initialization method can lead to unpredictable behavior, due to the fact that you have no way of knowing if any changes have been made between function calls. A global shim context could have negative impact when running several tests. It is therefore advisable to place a shim context within a using statement in each method that will use shims. There are three initialization method attributes and three cleanup method attributes. Let's start by looking at the initialization methods. They will be run in the following order. Assembly initialize, class initialize, 
and test initialize. After that, all methods with a test method attribute will be run, and following that, the cleanup methods will be run in the following order. Test cleanup, class cleanup, and finally, assembly cleanup. 